Riding a bike really is all about freedom. That feeling of being able to explore where you want, when you want, and wearing what you want. In the UK, the only legal requirement is that you wear a properly tested and certified helmet. Other than that, you're free to choose what you like. But here's the thing, most of us know that flip-flops and shorts are a bad idea, so we tend to buy kit designed for motorcycles. We buy protective kit. By law, it's all gotta be tested and certified as personal protective equipment. And that hasn't made it more expensive, but it has helped you choose the level of protection you're buying. And thanks to the Bennett's High Performance Award, it's now even easier to find the very safest motorcycle riding kit. Let's be very clear right from the outset. Nobody is trying to tell you what to wear. And that includes motorcycle insurance companies. I mean, ultimately, it's the bike that it's insured, not you. What you wear doesn't affect your policy. Having an accident is a risk in everything we do. And while I don't want to labour it, motorcyclists are vulnerable road users. So let's just summarise and we can move on. You are free to wear what you like. There is no compulsion to wear protective equipment other than a helmet. There's no rules saying you should wear something because it's tested and certified to be safer than something else. And you are more at risk on a bike than in a car. So while nothing can guarantee to protect you from injury, wearing some form of protective clothing will reduce the chances of coming to harm. Now, as most riders buy specific motorcycle clothing, and since 2018 it's all been required to be certified as PPE, the protective performance of that kit will be part of the buying decision. I mean, if it weren't, why spend the money on it? Why not just wear normal clothes? You can read a full explanation of all the labels you'll find in motorcycle riding gear in the link up here and in the description. So I'm gonna keep this brief. In the UK and Europe, helmets are certified to ECE 2205 or ECE 2206. 2206 is the newer standard and a lot tougher to meet than 2205. So those lids have been proven to offer more protection. In gloves, you'll find level one or level two. Level two is a tougher test to make for a safer glove. In boots, you'll see four numbers, each one or two again. The first number is for boot height, with one being for boots that just cover the ankles, two being for ones that go higher over the shins. And the other three numbers are for impact abrasion resistance, impact cut resistance, and transverse rigidity. And that's how much it will resist squashing sideways if it's trapped under the bike. Level two is again the higher protection. And then we've got jackets, trousers, and one and two piece leathers. All of these are certified to EN 17092 levels A to AAA. And there's B and C too, but we won't worry about those as B doesn't have armor and C is just armor. But you might find some kit that's certified to level one or two of EN 13595, like this textile jacket from BKS Made to Measure. But, Despite 13595 being a tougher test standard, with anything that meets it potentially being a lot safer than something certified to AAA under 17902, it's been withdrawn. And there's the problem. EN 17902 is absolutely brilliant in that it lets you and I choose kit based on how safe it's certified to be. The more A's there are, the safer it is. But once you get to AAA, there's nowhere else to go now the test, which is run on what's called a Darmstadt machine that spins the samples at a set RPM, then drops them a short distance onto a concrete slab, only tells you if it's a pass or fail, not how much better something is than another. Now that means that this pair of single layer jeans are, on paper at least, as safe as this set of high-end race leathers. Now these Tarrenis Elites are really good jeans. I regularly wear them, and the maker, Roadskin, doesn't use any marketing spin to try to infer that they offer the same level of protection as top quality leathers. They're honest with the customer. But some manufacturers and stores do make bold claims about their kit without having to provide any evidence. Whether that's inferring that everything AAA is the same or even that some jeans are 50% more abrasion resistant than quality leather. Well, now they can prove it thanks to the new Bennett's High Performance Award. From today, anyone can visit bennetts.co.uk forward slash high performance to find a database of all the provably safest riding kit available. And that database is gonna be building from nothing now and growing very, very quickly. So do keep checking back as often as you can. All gloves proven to be certified to EN 13594 level two and on our database will receive the Bennett's High Performance Gold Award. So will all boots that meet EN 13634 level two in all categories except the height. 
and all motorcycle jackets, trousers, and one and two piece leathers that are certified to EN1792 AAA will get the gold award too. But to help you find those that reach the truly highest levels of protection, we'll also be awarding platinum and diamond to this category. Any jackets, trousers, or leathers that have been certified to EN13595 level one get platinum, and any to level two get the very highest award, diamond. Now to put this into perspective, it's the level often looked for by police forces when buying riding kit for their officers. But as EN13595 has been recently withdrawn, Bennett's has produced a set of criteria that gives another way to prove kit is worthy of the platinum and diamond awards. Brands will need to have a small amount of testing done to their gear and provide a certificate from a notified body like Sartre. But because it's an extension of EN17992 with some extra requirements on the areas covered and the armour used, the only test needed is for abrasion, which uses the Cambridge machine as it's been shown to be a very close analogue to surface dressed roads. And it's been used to provide relative abrasion results for almost 30 years. So with this award, you'll be able to far more easily choose the protective kit you buy based on the protection it offers. But what should you buy? Well, that's a good question, but it's something only you can answer. We've already got hundreds of reviews of riding kit on our website at bikesocial.co.uk and we'll aim to review as many of the products that have met the criteria for the Bennett's High Performance Award as we can because high levels of protection aren't all you should think about when buying. Number one, can you afford it? I'd always recommend you buy the best you can and you'll find that products that have the High Performance Award are not necessarily going to be the most expensive but what's best for you is also going to come down to what's comfortable for you. That's so subjective that you must try anything on and find out for yourself. It's no good having something that's more abrasion and impact resistant than anything else if you can't easily move around in it. But ergonomics are part of standard certification and the best designed gear can combine safety and comfort. You need to decide for yourself, but don't believe the claims that safer kit is always heavier. That made to measure textile jacket I showed you is certified to EN13595 level two the very highest standard. While the 17092 AA rated Rucker Kingsley, for instance, is only 100 grams lighter. So there's a big difference in certified protective performance there, despite not much in weight. And I should say, the jackets are slightly different sizes, but it's still very little in it. But the thing is, I don't know which one you'll find more comfortable. You really must try anything you buy on for yourself. It's the same with leathers. There's little difference in weight between a lot of them. It all comes down to how well riding kit's been designed. There aren't many level two gloves on the market and most of the ones I wear are level one. They're still protective, but they haven't been through as tough a testing as the level twos. The same goes for boots, but you'd be surprised how many meet level two. These Road City sneakers cost 49.99, but they're level two in all categories except height. And actually these, these City Rex boots are more expensive, but they're a handy example of level two throughout. Now this is a AAA rated textile jacket. And here's another. If these brands submit them for the High Performance Award, they'll likely be on the database and awarded gold. As to which one is better, well, you'll need to read the reviews as remember that the safety certification certainly isn't the be all and end all. So what do I wear? Well. I know that decent leather kit will offer me the best protection, but more often than not, I choose to wear a pair of riding jeans and a leather jacket. In this clip, I'm in a pair of AAA rated lined hood jeans and a AAA gold top jacket. I tend to wear short level one gloves, but I have got some level two gloves as well. These Alpine Stars are expensive, but they don't lose out in comfort at all because they're well designed. These LS2s, they're a fraction thicker, but they're 80 quid, and these are comfier than some 200 pound gloves I've worn. Lindstrands do some Bergby level twos as well, which are just over 100 pounds. We'll review them all. Personally, I don't like to wear any textiles that aren't rated AA or above. Because look, the values out there, all vice textiles are now AA, including their mesh jacket. And the Oxford Hinterland, a brilliant piece of waterproof kit, reaches AA as well. More and more brands are seeing the marketing value of making the protective kit they sell more protective. And as technology moves on, we'll see gear getting safer. After all, there's some great value textiles out there now that have brilliant venting and outstanding waterproofing. 
So there's only so many new color schemes they can do. A lot of brands used to hide the protection rating away. Now a lot of them proudly display it because they're seeing the marketing value of offering higher levels of safety. I mean, this, this Knox Honister is already AAA, but it's not waterproof. And I, I'd imagine it'd be quite hard to laminate a membrane to it to make it waterproof. But what if something similar to this AAA Botex Elite was sewn in as a liner to a Gore-Tex outer shell? Oh, and if it's leathers, I see absolutely no reason for them not to be AAA at least. Most riders expect leathers to be the safest option, so I don't really think we should be seeing them at level A or AA. Made well, they aren't any less comfortable in my experience. Tech really is moving on quickly, and hopefully this award would encourage some brands to push harder to make the most comfortable, affordable, and protective kit. So we've contacted as many brands as possible to invite them to apply for the award. But if you're a manufacturer or an importer or distributor and you haven't got the email, you can apply through the website. And Bennett's makes nothing out of this. There is no charge to be included on the database. So if a product meets the submission criteria, it'll get the award. But no product can claim the award without submitting. And we have a section on the site to highlight any abuses. If you see the Bennett's High Performance Award being advertised, it takes just seconds to check that the product it's on is in that database. If it's not, do let us know. This award was set up to help riders choose the kit they want, but I'm sure some will be, well, let's say, less excited about it than others. And that's fine, because nobody is telling anyone what to do. The award is just there for those who want to consider the protective qualities of the protective kit they're buying. Some will, I'm sure, say that AAA is enough, and there are reasons to think that. For instance, for the top level of 17992, the samples are spun at 707.4 RPM before dropping onto a concrete slab, which is the equivalent of 75 mile an hour. So assuming you never go over that speed, that's all you need, right? Well, testing should only ever be considered a way to compare products as every crash is different, whereas every single laboratory test is required to be identical. The Bennett's High Performance Award simply raises the ceiling. And that's why nobody with any sense will ever quote speeds or slide times. Plus, of course, we haven't even mentioned road surfaces yet. And when I did the single layer versus line jeans video, which is linked up here, I explained that the majority of roads that motorcyclists enjoy tend not to be smooth asphalt, which the concrete dump set machine is designed to be a close analog to. Our roads are very often surface dressed. I'd assume that anybody riding a bike on UK roads pretty regularly has come across signs like this one. Surface dressing is small chips that are pressed into the road. Local councils love it as it's got good grip, it's resistant to frost and water damage, and it's relatively cheap. But it's also far more abrasive. A study in Australia where its similar surfaces showed that surface dressing is more than four times more abrasive than asphalt. Now I'd hate to be accused of being lazy. So rather than rely on common sense and experience, I submitted freedom of information requests to every local council in England, Scotland and Wales, as well as Transport for London, Transport Scotland and the Welsh Government. That's 92 requests in total, asking them what distance of roads they're responsible for and what percentage is surface dressed. Now National Highways isn't included in this, as I'd already covered the fact that they're only responsible for motorways and major A roads, which account for 2-3% to of England's roads. They don't use surface dressing, but those roads are where most motorcyclists try to avoid. So, 15 didn't reply, naughty, but I got 77 responses that amounted to 168,530.63 miles of road in Great Britain. Of those, not all gave me percentages of surface dressing, despite going back several times to discuss what was needed. I did, though, get useful responses from 42 authorities, which accounted for 97,114.49 miles. That's 58% of all the roads that councils who replied are responsible for. Of those, 41,610 miles are surface dressed, which is 43%. I'd say that, given that this includes a huge variety of locations, as well as transport for London, which being a city centre we knew wouldn't be surface dressed and accounts for 9,190 miles, it'd be 47% if we left that out. I'd say it's fair to extrapolate this 43% out to all roads in Britain 
besides the 2 to 3% of motorways and major A roads controlled by national highways. And that 43% is a very conservative figure. Lincolnshire Council, for instance, would only say that its 5,742 mile network is predominantly surface dressed, but that they don't have a number to put to it. For that reason, I just recorded it as 51%. Now, predominantly is probably a lot more. The same for Norfolk's 6,173 miles. They said the vast majority of Norfolk roads are surface dressed. Based on that and my experience, I'd say 75% easily, but as they refused to put a number to it, I logged it as 51%. Now keep in mind too that surface dressing is more likely to be used on rural roads, the ones we like to ride. Suffolk County Council told me that 53% of its 4,094 miles of roads are rural, but that 75% of those are surface dressed. Argyll and Butte Council explained that its 1,420 miles of roads are 81% rural and 19% urban. They told me that all of its rural network will have been subject to at least one surface dressing treatment, with the majority treated several times. Urban routes are, they said, less suited to surface dressing, so it accounts for only about a sixth of them. And this does tie in with the data showing that predominantly urban councils typically use far less surface dressing, like City of Edinburgh's 3.8% or Essex's 10%. So it's reasonable to assume that if we could look only at rural roads, they'd have an even higher percentage of surface dressing than these freedom of information requests indicate. A quick poll asked the uh, Bennett's Bike Social Facebook group which type of road they like riding on most. 34% said fast sweeping A roads, 66% said tight twisty back roads. Nobody voted for urban roads or motorways. It's fair to say then that the majority of riders are likely to be on surface dress roads for a large proportion of their time. Especially when you look at the fact that Cumbria's 4,712 miles of roads, rural and urban, are 73% surface dressed. Still not convinced? Well, consider the zoning used in testing. Only the key impact areas have to meet that small drop at an equivalent of 75 mile an hour onto a concrete slab for EN 17092. Now, I've already said that we shouldn't quote speeds, but know this. Only in 17092, AAA is the bum considered a key impact area. In AA, it just has to survive a drop at an equivalent of 28 mile an hour. And the material covering your belly and chest is only tested to an equivalent of 16 mile an hour. In single A, the bum area is tested with the sample spinning at just 16 mile an hour, but there's no abrasion testing required for the stomach and chest. Uh, they are tested for tear strength and seam strength, but there's no scientific correlation between these characteristics and abrasion resistance. So no matter how good the armor is at the key impact areas, if you slide on your front or back, you might not have as much protection as you assumed. And while it's true that on the road, rather than racetrack, there's a lot of stuff to hit before a slide typically goes on for very long, though I did manage to fair, slide a fair way in my first crash, there's a hell of a lot of energy in that initial landing on an abrasive surface, which can grab and pull at the material. That's why testing is all about relative performance, to compare the maximum potential for protection. I honestly hope you never fall off, and that if you do, it's not a crash that gets anywhere near needing the highest levels of protection. But if it's out there, and it's comfortable, and it's affordable, and it does everything else you need, why not buy for the worst case scenario? Abrasion resistance isn't all that matters, of course. Armour is vitally important, which is why the Platinum and Diamond High Performance Awards require armour that's a certain size as a minimum, and that it's level two. And these top two awards also demand chest armour or an airbag, because this is all about the highest performance kit. Remember, it's absolutely your choice what you wear, but the Bennett's High Performance Award raises the bar and can help you make the choices you want.